second. Okay. So let me just know if, if you can see my screen. Yes. You can start. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, uh, today's topic is Power BI Embedded. And we're going to talk uh, about what it means and uh, what are some differences. So let's go through the agenda. So what is Power BI Embedded? Uh, what are different scenarios? Uh, how are they described by Microsoft? And uh, what the real difference between them? Then we're going to go through a demo of uh, one of the scenarios. How, uh, how you can embed uh, your report into, uh, I would call it a website uh, or a web app. Uh, it's it's really simple. So so uh, it's a simple app that I have, right? So I'm going to show you like before the demo, what's the, uh, what's the outcome and then how we can get to it. And uh, at the end, we're, we'll talk about Power BI Playground and, uh, a couple of useful links uh, in case uh, something is uh, not clear or or you're not able to find one of the um, tokens or or uh, or URLs, and of course we'll we'll end on some questions and answers. So, uh, what is Power BI Embedded Analytics? Uh, so. It's a way to white label your Power BI in your own application. It can be a website. It's uh, creating reports in Power BI and branding them as your own. So it means that uh, if, if it's uh, embedding for your customers, a bit of foreshadowing, the customers don't need to know anything about Power BI. And you also have the possibility to impact the behavior of the embedded report, uh, which uh, we'll see a bit in, in our Power BI playground. Okay, so going to Power BI embedded solutions, right? There are two solutions or scenarios. There is the organization and the customers and uh, the differences between them. So one yeah, for organization, it's more about extending Power BI. So it can be uh, integration with Teams or SharePoint, uh, it can be uh, even PowerPoint. And when we talk about customers, it's more about an independent uh, software vendor. Uh, what does it mean? So for our organization, when we want to embed uh, our solution, it's uh, we use user authentication. This means that we need to have this user in, in, in power. We need to have a Power BI user for each user that uh, will use our reports. For the customers, it's an app authentication. So we're actually not uh, giving uh, a specific user for each of our users that's going to use an app, but uh, the app will authenticate. And we use that by calling um, Power BI REST APIs and uh, JavaScript APIs. Uh, in both cases, our reports, they need, reports need to be uploaded to the service, but there is a difference uh, in organization. It can be, uh, the report can be in any workspace. It can be your personal workspace or, or uh, in case of customers, it can be only in, in an app workspace. And so moving on to actually create that in both cases, you need to register an Azure, Azure Active Directory app. Uh, and uh, usually you need a client ID and a secret for, for it. Uh, I've seen some documentation that uh, for customers, you don't need it, but uh, you don't need the secret. You only need the client ID, but from my experience, you always need both. So it's uh, easier to actually have them both, even if you want to use uh, one of them. Uh, for organization, the app can be, uh, it can be in any app type. Uh, and for customers, it's uh, going to be a native app type. Um, just one more thing, as I forgot, for registering your Azure AD app, 
so, so Active Directory app. I'll show you two, uh, during our demo, I'll show you two ways how you can do it. Uh, because there is going to, for, because for customers, uh, there is additional step when you uh, try to do it, you need to grant permissions. If you don't uh, do this step, right, then uh, basically you'll get an error that, that uh, you're not, uh, you, you don't have uh, all of the privileges to, to run Power BI reports. So as I mentioned, uh, in organization, you authenticate to Azure with your user account. Uh, and for customers, it can be a master account or a service principal. In, in our demo, we're going to use a service principal. Uh, for organization, what you, you uh, need is uh, usually the embed URL. And uh, with that, you will be able to uh, embed uh, your report. However, for customers, it's a bit different. A apart from the embed URL, you also need something, uh, you need something called the embed token. And you can uh, call it with a generate token uh, API. So uh, we're going to talk about this embed token. I'm going to show you uh, uh, how you can call it and if uh, you're not uh, able to, to find it how to, uh, I've got some useful links actually to, to help you with that where you have some sample code for it. So looking at the flow of, of how we uh, authenticate and how we get the embed token. So let's say that we have a web app user. Uh, he's going to log into the web app and as I mentioned, then the web app is going to authenticate either through master user or service principal uh, to Azure AD. Uh, it will get the Azure AD token and then it will call the REST API to get the embed token. It will assign the embed token and run the report in Power BI and return the, the report. Okay, so there is also a bit of difference uh, uh, with uh, organization customers. It's about capacity. So normally the capacity for organization is not required. If you have users that have uh, pro license, then in a way you're good to go. Uh, for customers, the capacity is always required. Uh, there is one caveat here for organization. If you have three users, uh, so not with pro license, they will require capacity for app work, workspace. And uh, for organization, the uh, SKUs that you can use, it, I mean, it's premium capacity, but you can only use uh, Office like EM and PMP SKUs. There is no Azure SKU here that you can use. And for customers, you can use Azure, uh, or if you want, you can use also the Office SKUs. However, the Azure is recommended. It's easier to check your costs. Okay, so right now we're going to go to the demo uh, and to close my, okay. Okay, so as I said, right, this is basically a website that uh, will run the, uh, report that I've uh, downloaded. It's a sample report uh, that you can get in Power BI. Uh, it wasn't was not created by me. So basically, what it does, uh, I'm clicking the run report, and I'm opening a container that is opening a Power BI report. This is a normal report that you would get in your. Uh, Power BI service, uh, I can change the filters, I can change the tabs, and uh, basically, as I said, this is pretty simple uh, web page that, that uh, basically calls uh, an Azure function, but how to get there. Uh, so first of all, uh, we need to uh, have an Azure uh, subscription and an Azure account. Uh, I've created uh, my own organization for this. 
So uh, I've created an Azure directory with uh, a user that is uh, a, a global admin. It opens. Uh, basically, I've created uh, the global admin to So I've created a global admin because I'm going to use this global admin uh, user to uh, to create uh, all. Of, I of course I already created uh, all of the necessary uh, resources, but but uh, I've used a global admin to create that uh, in order to be uh, not to find any issues, right? So so like a global admin usually is doing. Uh, all of the tasks that I'm going to present. So I've got a global admin, and then what uh, you need to create is uh, when you go to uh, your uh, Azure Active Directory, you can go to, uh, you need to go to app registrations and you need to register a new app. So right, you put your name, uh, you select your platform, right? What it's going to be. And uh, if it needs a URL, uh, as I said, I already created that. This is the Power BI embedded demo. Now, the next step uh, for this, which is, uh, so we already have uh, an app. We need to grant the permissions for it and uh, here you can see that I already like granted all of the necessary uh, Power BI service uh, permissions. Uh, and uh, in order to get all of those apps, uh, I mean, uh, AP per API permissions, you can uh, create in a way a cheat sheet. So uh, if I go to Power BI uh, Playground, this is the, the second way how you can create your app. Uh, you can start setting your environment. And if uh, you can choose right, either you embed for your organization or embed for your customers, we're, we're going to select the embed for your customers. So I'm already logged in with my uh, user. And here I can just, uh, create my new app and select all of the necessary permissions, right? And I can register it. Now, from here, I can also create a workspace that is going to be used for this uh, for this app. But if I already have a workspace, then I will not need it. Uh, it's the same with the content, right? I can uh, already download some sample application, but let's say that uh, I don't want to do that uh, into wait. So I'll grant permission. It will ask me if, if just to confirm that it's okay. And I go to my apps. So should already be here. Yeah. So we've got our new app demo that we just created. Okay, so.
And if we go to APA permissions, it once the list is populated, you can see that uh, we also have the same uh, permissions that we had for the one that was created in Azure, not, not using Power API Playground. Okay, so we've got our uh, app right now. What we need to do is uh, we need to log into our Power BI uh, using our uh, account, right? So, so I'm still using uh, the global admin and we need to create a workspace. So I already have uh, a workspace, workspace created uh, where I have a sample report. Uh, once we've got that, uh, we can go to our admin portal and we need to uh, look at the tenant. Okay, I've skipped one, sorry, I've skipped actually one uh, step. So once we've got our, uh, once we've got our uh, app created, we should create a security group for it. For it. And uh, in this group, you'll see that one of the members is our power bi uh, is our uh, our app is in this group and it's going to be necessary when we uh, say that uh, we want to use uh, uh, in, in the admin portal that we want to use power bi embedded in our uh, app service so going back to the admin portal in the tenant settings uh, you need to go to developer settings and in developer settings, we need to enable the allow service principles to use Power BI APIs. Uh, and here, I mean, you can use the entire organization, but uh, it's better, um, it's recommended to use a, a security group. So we're going to use our security group for that. Uh, however, we're not done with uh, Power BI yet. Uh, so once we've got the workspace, once we've got the report, we need to go to the workspace settings. Uh, to the, sorry, to the workspace access. And uh, well, we've got right now our API Power BI embedded uh, demo uh, app uh, already added as uh, an admin, but if I look for for the new uh, app demo that we just created, we could also add that and select the admin role for it. And uh, then the app would be able to, we would be able to run uh, Power BI reports with this app as well. And for now, this will be all in Power BI. We need to go back to, to Azure and uh, we need to get some information from, uh, from what we've just created. And the most important part is in our app, we need the uh, client ID, uh, which I mentioned before, you will need your Client ID, uh, we need uh, the tenant ID that we're going to run that. And uh, we need uh, a secret. So I've created the secret some time ago. And uh, let's say that I've forgotten the, I've not uh, copied it and uh, uh, I don't have it right now. It's, it's not an issue. You can always like create a new one. Uh, and you just select uh, how long it will last and you can then use the new one, right? Uh, but it's, it's uh, perfectly fine. You can always store this uh, in some secure place that, that uh, your organization will require you to store it. Okay, so basically I've got my app ID, I've got my tenant ID and I've got my key, 
right? So this is the key that was uh, blanked out. Now, I will, I, I also copied, uh, copied the, the, the report uh, uh, URL uh, from here. And it was to get those two uh, IDs. So I basically looked at groups and I looked at reports. So this is our ID, our ID, uh, report uh, ID, and this is our workspace ID. So I've, uh, as you can see, I've copied uh, them here. So we're going to use them a bit later. Now, now uh, we actually need to start to think about our application. So the easiest way uh, to check uh, how to create your application is when uh, we were setting uh, up uh, our uh, uh, app in, in this Power BI Playground, we uh, could download a sample app, app application, right? So here uh, I would basically get a zip file with uh, already uh, an app uh, created. Uh, it, it's uh, basically a, a sample from Microsoft. And what it does, uh, you can see that I already have like four of uh, those files. It goes to, uh, you can find that on GitHub, right? And uh, you've got different uh, types of apps that you can try and uh, uh, use. Uh, we're using uh, the .name framework to embed for your customers. And we're using this uh, project basically. So okay, so this is, uh, as I mentioned, this is the app, right? So I've opened it in Visual Studio. And uh, what, uh, what is the most, most important part to, to get this to run and to test if uh, the sample report will run, you need to go to the web config, which is opened right here. And there, they will, there will be some blank spaces that you need to fill out, right? So, so one of them will be the authentication type. We're using service principle to, to run this. We need our application ID, which we copied and uh, paste it here. Then we need our workspace ID, we need our report ID. And there will be two more, which is the application secret and, uh, and our tenant. And once you've got all of those and you compi compile them, then basically you can and check if it runs without errors. So it's going to use my local host as, as, uh, and, and uh, try to run the report. Uh, when you run uh, this report, uh, so it, it gives you at the bottom, it gives you some, uh, also some nice links, right? And, uh, if you don't want to embed a report or you we want to embed a dashboard or just a tile, then you can try uh, to, to work with that, right? It's, it's also possible not to use only a report, but also a dashboard or even a tile. But uh, like today's demo is more about a report. It also gives you uh, a live demo, which actually is uh, going to point you to the playground. Uh, which we're going to talk about uh, a bit later. And the uh, last link is uh, going to, uh, to uh, learn Microsoft uh, site with all of the APIs listed and then so basically it, it's uh, a way to start your uh, journey with Power BI embedded. So it will show you all of the yeah. So it points you to the GitHub, but the GitHub is already deprecated. So so you actually need to go to learn Microsoft where you have your client APIs. 
Okay, so our sample report works, but uh, it's not actually how you uh, embed that. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, about this a, a bit more. It's, it's actually my own app. Okay, so, so what, one of the uh, important parts which, is, uh, uh, which we will need is this uh, minified uh, JS, uh, JavaScript, JavaScript uh, which we will use also in our, so I'm not an expert in JavaScript, so I just basically copied it and uh, I guess that you should be able to use it uh, as well if you ever need uh, so to use your uh, if you ever want to embed your reports and what but it's also uh, really important is that uh, when you try to embed uh, your report, right? So, so, so we need, need our uh, tokens, uh, as I mentioned before, and we are calling it uh, with, uh, in this case, it's uh, .NET SDK. So we want a, uh, this generate token request right so so we will uh, get our token for for our for all the, for our reports and we're going to pass that to uh, one of uh, the apis uh, to, to one of the apis that will basically uh, return the, the the report for us so you need to use that in your solution uh, in order to generate the embed token and, and the embed URL. And so I've got my own solution, right? It's, it's a bit more even, I guess, I would say that this one is even a, a bit more simplified than uh, than the one that, that is being used in in, uh, in in the sample because it, it's smaller. And I'm basically in in a lot of ways I'm uh, copying what 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 the sample report is doing, but uh, the difference is that um. Uh, passing the report ID a bit later in our uh, in, in in my app. So I've still got the minified uh, uh, the minified JavaScript, and then I've got my uh, HTML file, which is also uh, JavaScript. JavaScript. However, here I've uh, already had some. Uh, different parameters that I will use and will start with uh, using the uh, with registering uh, or creating a Power BI uh, Azure function. So here, as you can see, uh, I've got my uh, so this uh, Azure function is going to use this uh, local settings. I mean, th those are the local settings we're going to use those variables in in our function. But uh, basically, what uh, this function does, right? So by using the service principle uh, and application ID, workspace uh, ID, the secret and the tenant, I'm going to
wait what that happens. So basically when I pass the port ID, I'm not quite sure if you can see this. Uh... Okay, so what this function does, it, it uh, when when you specify the report ID, it will give you the embed token for 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 this uh, uh, report, and it's going to generate the embed URL for it. And also it should give you the and, yeah, and it returns the report ID one more time. Uh, if you need, you can like if you ever need this uh, in order to like hard code it, which is not recommended, then basically you can just copy your embed token and embed URL. But uh, in a way it's 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 a simple function to to call this uh, APIs and, and uh, to get those. However, uh, we need to, right now we need to create a, an Azure function that is actually going to do that for us. So going back to Azure. I already have a function that uh, uh, I've created before. So basically, right, you you need to create a function app where you're going to specify where it runs, right? Uh, like what stack will, uh, will you be using? We're using .NET in this case. Uh, the version and the region, uh, but as I said, uh, I already created that. So now, what is uh, important, right, in, in here? So we've got our Power BI function, and so when I go to my sample report. I can right click on uh, on the function that I've created and I can say publish. Right? So right now, uh, if I would publish it again, right, uh, I've published it a week ago and uh, I've basically assigned to th this app to, to my, uh, my Power BI function. If you go to your Power BI function, you if, and go to functions. Uh, you see that I have it here. You can always test uh, your Power BI function uh, to check if it's going to run correctly. So, um, and uh, as I mentioned before, we need our report ID um, because we're actually passing this uh, report ID uh, in uh, to, to the function to, to get the embed token. So it gave me the, the same embed token, the same embedded uh, URL and, uh, and return the report ID again. Okay, so before we okay, so before we close the function, there is one more thing that we need uh, from here. We need this uh, get function URL, and what we're interested in is this link. So you might find that I already have this link and what we will want is this code, right? So this code uh, is, uh, it's giving, uh, if, if, if you possess the code, then you can run the 
Azure uh, function. If you don't know the code, then you won't be able to run the function. So you won't be able to use uh, the, uh, well, you won't be able to pass your embedded uh, token and, and your embedded URL. And uh, so we'll need to use that in our app. So now if I go to my index, uh, sorry, to, to my website, uh, you can see that uh, like from, from the, the outcome that I was showing you, right? We've got some simple uh, button that is running the report. Uh, this is the, the thing that we'll be passing to, to our, uh, to our function and it basically has a container underneath it. And we're going to call this container later as well. We're we will be passing it to, to, to one of the uh, to config files. So uh, we need our Azure function, which uh, is the, the Power BI embed, embedded token. Then we need the code to run it. And once we get the success, then what we take is we take the embedded token, the embedded URL, and, and the data report. Uh, it's provided by the function, and it's passed to uh, this Power BI embed. Uh, so we take the report container that uh, we uh, specified here, and we then put the config uh, uh, the, the configuration that we got from from the from the uh, function, and this way we can uh, call Power BI to get our report in on our, in our website. So once we've got that, we need this Power BI and uh, the, our uh, our app. And so normally you would uh, host it on on a, uh, on on a web server, right? Uh, like, uh, but we will be using our co container. So I also created something. So in in my resource groups, right? I've created uh, a storage account. And I've created a container where, where I uploaded both of those files, right? So, so the minified JavaScript and, and uh, our app. Uh, also, uh, to, to, so in order to check how, how this is going to perform, right? So, I mean, to, to get uh, the the link that, that we're going to run, we need to generate a SAS token and URL. And basically this is our URL for where we can run our, uh, our report, our website that will run the report. So we paste it here. And then when we try to run the report, In the background, of course, the, the embed token and embed, embed URL are passed. And uh, as you can see, like we have our report on our website. Now, you from it, it might happen that even if you do all of those steps, you will get an error. And usually it's connected to, to the function. And if you go to the function and go to the API part, there is this cross origin resource sharing. So you would need to add uh, your uh, cross origin resource sharing to the host of this, which is our, in this case, which is th this part in, of our container. Okay, so I guess it's, all about them. I I hope that it wasn't uh, too complicated because I I think that I've actually said that it's intermediate plus. 
So, uh, but yeah, this is the easiest way to, to embed your, uh, for, for your customers, of course, so to embed your uh, Power BI report, right? The, there is also uh, an integration with, uh, with other tools. So here I'm connected to my software account and I mean, I can just use any report from my software Power BI uh, service, which I think, here and yeah, basically I have uh, my report in my my presentation at the moment right and I can of course change the, the filtering on this So this would be everything about the demo. Uh, let's go to Power BI Playground. We already visited that uh, when I was uh, showing you how to register an app. But uh, what's nice about this uh, uh, tool is that it's a great tool to actually check uh, how you can uh, impact your report. So if you go to your developer sandbox, you can either use a sample report, you can use a report that you've created, or if you have your embed token and your embed URL and your title, it's already populated because I'm connected to, to, to here. So you can, you can use your report. It's going to open right now and What's really nice about this one is that if I want, let's say, so I've got four tabs and let's say that I want, so you can just drag and drop a piece of code here and you can say that the active page when, when I actually run this, when I run this, it's going to open on the third page instead of the first one. So you can, check how you can impact the, the report and uh, it's basically going to uh, change the behavior of the report in your app so it's not always uh, needed to fix everything or or to uh, in any cases if you want a different uh, if you want a different behavior in your uh, power bi service and different in your app then here's how you can try and check exactly what you want to uh, change and how what what code you will need to add to your app to actually uh, populate that. Okay, and uh, yes, yeah, so there are two useful links that uh, I. Uh, added to the presentation, right? So one of them is the, uh, how to generate a token. If you, if you for example, mm, had to, have to call it uh, like raw APIs and how to get your embedded URL. So here, right, uh, this is also from Microsoft. Uh, so, you can check how the embed token and generate uh, token interact and how, how to get them. And if, so basically this is uh, what you like, you need to uh, ask, ask the API, Power BI API for generate token. Um, however, it might not always be uh, so easy. So it's good to actually uh, use the try it uh, here. Continue. And in here in body, you know, like the request body, it's in uh, JSON format, right? You can use your, uh, you can just uh, copy and paste it. And here uh, I would need my data set and my report ID. So if I go to my report ID, right? We've used it before for our app. So this one is, pretty, I mean, it, it's pretty simple to get the, uh, the data set ID as well. Yeah, this. Yep. 
Okay, and I need the data set, uh, which uh, if you've worked with Power BI, right, you uh, don't go to the report, you go to the data set that uh, it's taking data from. And basically you just copy and paste the ID also from the link. Okay, and then I can run it, right? And so, so I'm getting, so basically this is my, uh, again, it's quite long, but it's the, the embed token that uh, I used in, in, my, uh, in my app to, to, to get, to, to, like, to, to pass it to Power BI. So that's how you can get the token. And then there is the embed URL. And if I go to as well, so it's it's a different website, but it it uh, shows like it gets the reports in group. So what I need is the group ID. And here I will get my embed URL that I can use later in, in my app. Okay, so that would be actually all from my side. So if there are any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Okay, any questions? Okay, so I guess not. Uh, so, 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 yeah, Petra, thank you all. I, it's, 